Let's see if I can get this all out in one breath. Quadlock wireless charger, heated grips, gauge relocation bracket, bark buster handguards, fender riser, brake reservoir, mirror, engine dresser bars, custom bash plate, custom headers, decat, Zard slip-ons, Kellerman indicators, custom tail tidy with plate light, Pirelli Scorpion Rally STRs. <sighs> Woo! Got a head spin. G'day guys, welcome to Motorfields. I'm Rob Hamilton. Poo! This is the episode. This is the parts list, the mods list episode to my 2018 Triumph Strict Scrambler. I've had this thing for like a year now. I've customized it and so I'm keen to share with you guys the list of the mods I've done to this thing so far. There'll also be links to my previous videos popping up here for each of the mods I've done. These are the videos I've just done in the past that shows the install, my thoughts, just a little bit more detail on each on each of the mods that I'm gonna be showing you today. Shall we do it? We've got a lot to get through. Ah, also, I'll be giving you guys just a couple of pros and cons on each of the items as well because there are, you know, the things I just want to share with you. I'll try to get it as quick as possible. We've got so much to get through. Holy crap, Rob, I need to stop talking. Let's get into this. First up is the Quadlock Wireless Head Charger. It's a great piece of tech. Charges your phone wirelessly while you're looking at maps and everything so you don't have to worry about your phone ever dying, which is incredible. Clip your phone in and that's all you need to do. Install is very easy as well. It is big. It just looks a bit big on the handlebars. If you're trying to clean that up, you want a clean, minimal look, it's pretty big. But there is a lot going in there, so it is it is fair. It charges, your phone's not going to die, it's incredible. Next are the heated grips. Now, if you saw my video a couple of weeks ago, I did a mad install on them. Damn it, I can't, I just can't stress to you how good these things are. They keep your hands nice and toasty. What more can I say? In winter, they're just a must. They're a game changer. They make your winter riding experience amazing. 340 bucks, that'll get you the set on there. They are a game changer. I highly rate them. I love how it's just that button. Everything's all integrated, so plug and play. The grips look exactly the same as these stock grips. They're just, uh, they're an awesome, they're an awesome thing. I don't really have any cons about it. They're just, I was so happy. I just can't believe how good they were. The gauge relocation bracket. Now this thing is from Amiga Racer. They come in at 65 bucks. Very simple, very easy to mount and install. It hides the gauge. Better field of view for me without having the gauge just, you know, sticking in front of you. And it just looks different. And I'm, I'm all about that whole, you know, looking different thing. I think that's custom. If you, if you like it, it's cool. If you, if you don't like it, then just don't do it. The cons. It is hard to see the gauge. You're literally, you know, tipping your head down every time to see the gauge. And the tank does get in the way a little bit. You're losing half the gauge. So you see about up to 100 kilometers an hour. And then from there on, you don't see. You can't see your right indicator. You can't see, you can't see a whole bunch of stuff. The whole right hand side of the gauge, you can't see. Everything on the left, you can. Again, it's just one of these things. It's like, a, it's just a custom thing. And like, this was just a cheap option. 65 bucks, mount it down there. Get it out of your face. So for that, it's awesome. The Bark Busters hand guards. Now my bike took the BHG 152 mounting kit, and that's a universal mounting kit. And they just they're just like a hundred bucks. The most expensive part is the um, actual carbon fiber guards themselves because they are legit carbon fiber and they're $195 Australian. But they do have plastic guards that range between 40 to 50 bucks as well. But if you're interested in mounting guards up to your bike, then you best be just jumping on their website, punching your bike in, and then just seeing what parts they have to offer. Now I've loved my bike busters. They've been on there for a few months now. They keep the wind off your knuckles. They keep the rain off your knuckles, all the elements. They protect your hands. If you go on some off-road trails, you've got some branches just smashing your bike there. Your hands and knuckles are pretty damn safe. And also if you drop your bike, your levers are protected. So I highly recommend the Bark Buses. They've, uh, they just, and they just make my bike look pretty damn tough. I love the carbon fiber. I love the Bark Buses. Hit them up, the good dudes as well. The High Fender Bracket. This was one of the very first mods that I did to the bike. I just wanted to get that bracket up there. I think it suits the vibe of the bike. Gives it that scrambly sort of look. They come in at like it's $96 Australian. So it wasn't too expensive. Um, it's British Customs, very well made, very easy to install. The cons, it literally does nothing. So if you're if you're riding in the wet, you're just gonna see water just flicking up everywhere around you. Uh, your headlight just gets super dirty straight away. You're just getting water sprayed everywhere and mud just flies up the radiator as well. So if you take an off-road in the mud and trails and everything like that, your radiator is gonna get absolutely smashed. You're gonna be careful because it can fill up the fins and um, your bike can run that a little bit hotter. So just be mindful of that if you're gonna raise the front fender. It does look sick though. I prefer the look of the 2019 high mount guards and they actually have a, like a lower part down the bottom so it would stop all that water from just spraying back onto the bike, which I think is sick. 
I'm just looking at a way to be able to fit the 2019 to the 2018. I reckon business, that'll look sick. If anyone has any ideas, please let me know because I'm super interested. The Direct Mount Brake Reservoir. This thing's from British Customs. It comes in at $150 Australian. I absolutely love it. I had that big plastic thing on there with the big bracket. I think it just looks hideous. Um, putting this little thing on there just gets rid of all that. It's direct mount, it's straight on. It took me about maybe like, I don't know, like 25 minutes to install. Maybe not even. They got an awesome install video. Just watch that through. You'll be able to do it yourself at home. No problems. I think I just think they're an awesome way to just to keep your bars looking all nice and tidy. It's, it's all metal, it's not plastic. What more? What more? What more do you want? The mirror. This is probably the, the, the most I get asked. <laughs> Where the hell did I get my mirror from? It's an eBay special. Got it off eBay, it was like 40, 40 to 50 bucks. So I'm gonna read this. This is like, this is the exact description that they have in their title. So you can go ahead and type this in or hit the link in the description. <clears throat> CNC aluminium universal side rear round rear view mirrors motorcycle street bike. That is what the description is. I'm actually so happy with it. It was the very first mirror I bought. I wasn't, I wasn't riding with mirrors for like maybe like six months. Just jumped on eBay. I saw the style. They sort of like match the bike. They almost look similar to my stock mirrors, or the stock mirrors that come with the Street Scrambler. So for that, I was stoked. The mounting of it though will be the most tricky part for most of you guys, I think. The way I did it is I just reversed the mirror clamps upside down. So then you have the mounting point underneath. And now there are a spacer in between the mirror mount and the mirror itself. Now that space is for my Kellerman indicator. But I feel like if you don't have that spacer, then it's, it's just not gonna fit properly. It was already pretty finicky to sort of get it where I wanted it to. So I just turned the original mirror mounting points upside down and it, it just worked a treat. It's, it just looks the, you know, it looks the business. That, that's it, that, that was, they're the mirrors. And it comes in a pack of two. Just give them a crack and see how you go. I like how it's got the, it's got like a bluish sort of finish as well. Um, but that's the, that's the mirror pretty much. Um, that's, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, the engine dresser bars. They come in about 200 bucks Australian, directly from Triumph. Takes about 42 minutes to install. Wasn't that hard either. Basic tools, you're laughing. They protect your engine, which is nice. And there's covers, those, you know, we all know those side covers cost a damn lot. So if you're gonna be taking off road a little bit, I suggest just getting them, spend the 200 bucks. It makes your bike look a little bit chunkier as well. You can even just mount your lights on there. You can mount some cool things on there. I put my GoPro on there sometimes. Uh, I think it's a good investment. Cons, I don't have any. I think they're, I think they're awesome. I really, really do like them. Now the custom bash plate. So I had Johnny from Kansai Giant uh, Design Factory. He actually built this for me because I didn't like the plastic bash plate. I cracked that the very first time I went off-roading. So a metal one, a nice solid metal aluminium boy had to be had. It had to be had. Um, I do need to extend it. We need to extend it a little bit more so it actually does cover the oil filter and the sump because I didn't realize that the sumps push so far back on the engine. It's actually a pretty strange design, but it just needs to be extended just that little bit more and, um, and I, think, I think we'll be laughing then. But full custom, does the job way better than the plastic. So if you want to get one custom made, hit up Johnny. He's, uh, he's the lord at doing this. Damn, he's good. And also custom straight from Johnny's workshop are the headers and decat. A huge noticeable difference when removing the cat. Absolutely, if you're thinking about doing it, do it. You will be happier, just breathes a lot freer. Even if you're not doing any of the, the slip-ons or anything like that, or straight through, if you're keeping the stock cones and you just wanna have a little bit more, just a little bit more go, let it breathe a little bit easier, then do it. I think it'll actually make your the sound of the bike be a little bit more raspy and throatier as well. So it, it just boosts everything. It makes everything feel better. The bike actually feels a lot nicer. The bike has a self-learn system. So once you've done the decat, you just let the bike run and idle up to when the fans kick in. And that's basically reset the ECU and you're, you're pretty sweet to go. It doesn't hiccup, doesn't cough. It just, just goes and breathes and you'll be frothing. And there's also some weight reduction when removing the cat as well. That thing was, man, that was heavy. It was such a heavy clunk of metal. Gone. See you later. Ta-ta. The Zard slip-ons. These are the N2 Silence slip-on version. Links directly to the pipe I have are in the description below. $985 Australian plus shipping. You're saving around two kilograms. The sound is absolutely insanely good. Listen to this. Put, wait. Whoa. Whoa up. Put some headphones on and listen to this. Look, I'll do it with you. Let's get some headphones. Stick them on. Make sure it's connected to your computer. 
Now listen to these zards in detail. They sound so good. They sound like, damn, I get so happy every time I start up the bike. It just idle. If you're just cruising around slowly, it just sounds like a low purr, like a, like a lion just purring through the streets. And then when you open it up, damn, it just cracks. So it's got like a cool stealth sort of mode. You can find the sweet spot and it, it barely makes any noise. And then when you just open it, just, and you let people know you're there. Have a mad solid scream. They sound fantastic couple of cons though they are a little bit tricky to install I've had some people I even had a couple of issues where it just the, the, the holes just weren't lining up and you had to sort of move everything around and jiggle it in and you know find the right spaces for everything it was a little bit hard to just just get it sitting right also the heat shields they they sort of overlap so you've got your you have your stock heat shield and then you have the black heat shield that comes on the Zard itself. And now we had to actually shave that back a little bit. Well, Johnny just grinded that little bit back, which is fine. Like you can't, it's not even noticeable, but they do touch. If you don't shave it back, they do end up touching, which is not ideal. It just needs to be shaved that little bit back. Uh, maybe they'll fix it in the future. And also another thing that really just, just bugs me is that the damn pillion peg just won't go up all the way and click in it to its little home if you want to fold your pillion pegs up. So I've always, this is, that one's always down. That on the side, it's always down. Always. <laughs> now obviously a way around that is to just remove the pillion pegs altogether. But if you're going to be taking someone around all the time, just take note that it just doesn't fold up unless you put a massive spacer in there as well so it can click back. Even if you try to click it back, it's just going to be touching the heat shield. It might start marking it, but it ends up just falling down anyway. So that's a bit of a bummer. But they are sick pipes, I really like them. I felt a performance increase as well. Uh, I froth hay, I froth, and lots of people do froth in them. So Zard, I'm like, I'm all for it. Just a few little things I gotta fix up, but I'm all for it. Okay, so the Kellerman indicators are the Kellerman Atto's. The front ones are the Atto Dark. They come in at $101 plus shipping Australian. The rear are the Atto DF. They are $156 Australian plus shipping. And the Kellerman Atto's are known for their tiny design. They're so, so small, yet they are so, so damn bright and very, very well made. The rears are the stop tail and indicators all packed into one tiny little unit. It's like smaller than a, a damn penny. And the front's just the indicators themselves. Super high quality, very, very bright. I reckon they're just gonna last forever. They are a little bit XE, but they're well worth it. Like they're so, they're so worth it. Now the hyper flash issue is just one issue that I do have with them. Even when I go through the system settings on the scrambler and choose LED indicators and I choose option one, option two, option three, it's still, every now and then it might indicate at the, the, the correct rate, but then it just sometimes just doesn't and then it'll just stay hyper flashing all the time, which is pretty weird. I haven't had anyone, um, you know, encounter this issue before. So I think I'm gonna have to just put, you know, resistors in again, which isn't a fun job, so I haven't done it yet. Um, but yeah, a bit of a shame about the whole flasher thing. I was really pumped when I heard about it. I was like, man, that's such an incredible idea. No, no resistors, no nothing. Hold the information button in, I think. Turn the key on, and then you'll see on your um, on your gauge it'll come up with um, three little options for LED indicators. So you can just hit that, and then bam, it's going to flash at the normal rate. Just doesn't work for some reason. Weird. The custom tail tidy. Now that, again, that was built by Johnny from Kansai Giant Design Factory. Hit him up, check him out. Uh, he did an incredible job. He just nailed the vision that I had, like just down to a T, just super minimal, as minimal as it could possibly be. You got those Kellerman holes in there very nicely. And then I just found a cheap, like $20, $25 LED strip to just stick under the cowl there. And that just lights the number plate up perfectly. And finally, it's the Pirelli Scorpion Rally STRs. Damn, what an awesome, awesome tire. Now I don't do that much off-roading, so on the road I was sort of, you know, a bit worried about them being, you know, just, just semi-off, semi-on, and how they'd handle around corners. No issues at all. You can scrape pegs left and right, no problem. I've never had it kick out on me. I've never, never had any issues like that. The only issues I feel like you would have is that they do wear out pretty quick, and I'm noticing that. 
I'm on about maybe 5,000 Ks, 4,000, 5,000 Ks, and I've already worn out all the sort of markings on each of the massive rubber chunks there, but they do look sick. They're aggressive, they handle really well in the dirt as well. You have more traction off-roading. Off there's a tiny little bit of noise when you're hitting about 70 and 100 Ks. You just you get that like a little bit of a whoa, 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 whoa. Through the bike, you can feel it. It doesn't bother me. I sort of like it. It's, it's raw, it's aggressive, it's my vibe. But yeah, Pirelli Scorpion Rallies, man. Get amongst it, get in and amongst it if you're thinking about doing it. Alrighty guys, I think that is it. I think we covered pretty much everything that I've done to my bike to date. To date? I can't believe it's already been a year. Dams. Alright guys, well that is it. That is the mods list. I will be doing a lot more and I'll probably do another mods list in, um, for 2021 or something. Who knows. I'll also be doing a review on the Street Scrambler as well. Uh, a year. A year of owning it. I'll be doing an honest review. If you have any questions guys, chuck them in the comments below and I'll answer them as best I can. Links are on the description for your pleasure. Um, and yeah, hope I, I just hope I helped you guys out. I think that's it. I'm gonna go and have some lunch and I'm gonna go for a nice uh, stroll. Today is 25 degrees. Spring is coming, baby. Spring is coming and I'm excited. And I'm gonna head off for a nice warm, hopefully warm night ride tonight uh, with Nick. Haven't seen Nick in a while. Might get him on soon. I think we need to finish that SC Project exhaust off. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit like, hit subscribe. I really do appreciate the support that you guys have given me so far. Ride safe and I'll see you next week's vid. Peace.